My name is Alex McEachran, and I'm with Power Standards Lab, which is in California. Um, here we are in Spain, but we do, at Power Standards Lab, work all over the world uh, on power quality. We have engineers who speak uh, Japanese, uh, several dialects of Chinese, French, German, Spanish, and American Sign Language, if you happen to need that. Uh, and we do power quality work, so um, we're very interested in any conference that is as good as this one, where people are all here to discuss power quality. And I'm going to be presenting a tutorial on practical power quality. There's a lot of work done at this conference on uh, sort of theoretical and academic power quality. There are lots of equations and very interesting, but perhaps a bit technical work. Uh, the tutorial is about practical problems with lots of stories and photographs at sites where they've had problems with earthing or voltage dips or harmonics and exactly how we went about finding those problems and what we did to fix them. And uh, just as an example, one of the pieces of advice that I give to engineers going out to look for power quality is that they should use all of their senses except taste. We don't want them licking anything. But you ought to be smelling the circuit breaker panels and seeing if you smell any burning rubber. And you ought to be listening to the transformers because we all know what 50 hertz sounds like. It's sort of a low hmm. But if you listen to a transformer and it's saying hmm, you know you have harmonics. And you ought to be feeling circuit breaker panels with the back of your hand, looking for loose connections because they'll feel hot. And just sort of simple practical things like that in the tutorial. Uh, as you said, I'm presenting three papers here. Uh, one of them is on a new very low cost power quality measurement technology that we're just introducing now uh, with some colleagues in Japan. Um, it's a, you might think of it as a cross between a power quality analyzer and a digital camera. Uh, so it uses digital camera batteries and storage techniques, but it measures power quality. And the other paper that I'll mention is about a free program called the Power Quality Teaching Toy that is a great way for young engineers to learn about power quality. And it can be downloaded for free at www.leonardo-energy.org. How we're going to improve the number of sites where power quality is actually measured. Because the, the, the traditional approach has always been that if a customer has a problem with power quality, a disturbance, then some engineer arrives from the local electric company with an instrument and sets it up to record the next time that problem happens. And to me, that's a bit like saying, if I break my leg and go to the hospital, what they do is they put an instrument on me to watch when I break my leg next time. It's not very useful. It would be much better if we had data available when the problem happened. But the only way that can happen is if power quality instruments get a lot cheaper so that they can be distributed everywhere that there might be a problem. And that's what we're trying to do now is move power quality instruments from being a 10 or 15,000 euro box to being a four or 500 euro box. And maybe we'll be able to get it down to 10 or 20 euros at some point how we can use the contacts at a conference like this to move the ideas forward. I think that the real answer is not so much in the range of people, because you can get ranges of people to talk to on the web. The reason you need to come to conferences like this is for casual conversations in the hallways and sitting at lunch next to someone who happens to have an interesting approach to looking at harmonics problems that you'd never meet otherwise. Um, just today, uh, I have been approached by, first during the, uh, the plenary session, a very nice professor from Poland came to me and explained to me his new ideas about, um, about VARs and, and power factor. Um, at lunch today, uh, before I was brought away to come to this interview, uh, we were discussing, two of us were discussing how harmonics measurements are made in Belgium and in Spain and the United States and how they differ. 
And those kinds of casual conversations only happen at conferences like this. You could always read the papers on your own, but you need to come to the conference for the casual conversations. The, the most important idea that the attendees can leave this conference with is that we should no longer think of power quality as a measure of how good the electric power is, but instead we should think of it as a compatibility question. Are the loads, the, the, the computers, the industrial equipment, are they tough enough to tolerate what is going to be coming from the grid? And is the grid providing good enough power to run the loads? But it's a compatibility question, power quality. It's not just a measure of whether the utilities are performing properly or not. The manufacturers of the loads have a responsibility as well. And that's the main idea that I'd like to see people come away from the conference with. Thank you.